Hey everyone, I'm out here today again with my lovely assistant Christian. Uh, today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about the backup iron sights that I recently put on my BCM and they are the Sidewinder backup sights from Strake Industries. Again, as you guys know, I've been doing a lot of work with Strike Industries. They have some really cool stuff, and there's definitely a lot to like here, which we're gonna go over. Um, it's not without its flaws, which I'm obviously gonna talk about as well, but I really think that there's a lot to like here, especially when you consider the price point they're coming in at and uh, kind of what the uh, competition is out there. So really quick, I wanna run through some of the features. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer uh, to show you. Obviously, uh, these can be set up offset as they are currently, or you can also have them in line, which is gonna be easier to demonstrate up here on the front site. So let's say you have a red dot or something where you wanna be able to co-witness your irons. You can have them in line like this and it'll work uh, just fine like that. Or you can have them offset like I have set up here, uh, which is ideal if you're say running a magnified optic like my primary arms one to six, which if you're interested, if you buy one from Optics Planet and use the coupon code Origear, you'll get 5% off your order. So a little fun fact there, a little shameless plug. Anyway, um, so one of the cool things about these also is it's 100% toolless adjustments. So you can actually get on here and rotate that front sight up and down and you can do your windages adjustments here in the back and it even has little markings for you, which I'll show you a close up picture to demonstrate that. Um, so toolless adjustments, which I really like. Uh, and the nice thing too is as you can tell, if I fold this down, you get no extra bulk over the top of this rail. So let's say I was running a, a high power scope or something like that with a giant fat ocular end. As long as your scope is gonna clear the rail, it's gonna clear your sights. So there's no limitation to the size of the scope you, ha uh, you can use, at least no limitation based on your iron sights alone. Um, and it, it just basically wraps around um, the, the rail like that, hopefully you guys can see, and uh, it just clamps on that way. And it seems to be nice and sturdy from my experience. Uh, just use Loctite and, and you should be just fine. All um, right, so now I wanna demonstrate the uh, point of impact shift of whether you have the sights offset or whether they're in line with the bore. Now, Strike Industries on their website, uh, on the page for these says that you will probably get a point of impact shift. And I have personally experienced that as well. However, I wanna try to quantify that for you as best I can. So I have a target set up right now at just 25 yards uh, to make sure that any shift is because of the sights and not because of myself or the ammo. I'm gonna be shooting this Fioki 77 grain uh, Sierra Match King stuff. This is really, really accurate. Uh, it's been running really well out of my BCM. So this will make sure that the ammo is not, uh, is not at fault for whatever shift uh, goes on. So what I'm gonna do now is take off my primary arms one to six scope, and then we're gonna use just the irons. Um, so while it is nice that you can have them both offset or in line, we'll see how much of a difference it makes. Okay, now shift them in line. Same exact point of aim. All right, so I'm gonna grab that target, bring it back, and we'll talk about what uh, what we find. Okay, so let's talk about uh, what our results are. If you can't see it well enough on camera, I'll go ahead and just close, uh, do some close-up images so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Our first five shots were centered right here, a little bit low, that's anticipated. I have them zeroed for 50 yards, so I expect them to be a little bit low at 25, so that's pretty much dead on. Now, when I shifted them over in line, they dropped down here. Now, just because I'm not used to having my iron sights angled like that, I haven't shot like that since I had to use a gas mask to qualify in the military. Um, it's not as tight of a group as a, the, uh, the first group. However, you can tell that that's a good three to four inches uh, down to the slightly to the left after I shifted them over. Again, Strike Industries does not expect that your point of impact will stay the same, whether they're offset or whether they're in line. 
I just wanted to demonstrate that and kind of quantify for you how much of a difference it can make. Again, this is at 25 yards. You stretch this out to 100 yards, you know, you could be very well off target, possibly off paper if you're shooting at paper. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. Basically, long story short, if you plan on using them offset, zero them offset. If you plan on using them in line, co-witnessed, zero them that way. So then that will avoid you having these issues. So zero it the way you're gonna shoot it. When it comes to backup iron sights, in my opinion, um, there are a couple things that I'm really looking for. First of all, when I'm not using them, I want them to be out of the way and not snagging on anything. And that is definitely the case, at least when these are in the offset position. So as you can see here, there's really no excess bulk of this sticking out or any way that this is gonna really snag uh, on anything on my firearm. Basically you have, if it can fit past your forward assist and your shell deflector, your rear sight's not gonna catch on it and your front uh, sight should be close enough that it's not gonna snag on anything either. Now, if you have these kicked up, like you were gonna do them in line, that's not necessarily the case. It is gonna possibly snag a little bit more, uh, but it should be just fine. Uh, one of the things that I really like about these is it has really positive locking positions when you're doing offset and when you're doing them in line. Uh, so it's not gonna come off that by itself. However, one of the downsides in my opinion is that the detent that holds it in the up or, uh, or down position is not very strong. Now, I didn't know if this was uh, limited to my mine uh, specifically, if maybe other ones out there were a little bit stronger. So when I was at SHOT Show, I got my hands on another set of these and the detent was about the same. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. However, it would be nice to have a little stronger detent holding these in the up position. Um, but, you know, again, you, you can't get everything, I guess. Um, the other thing that I don't like is that this front sight is not compatible with standard AR-15 front sights. So if you wanted to swap this out with say a uh, excess front post or even one with a finer tip, um, you're not gonna be able to do that. That said, it's not a bad front sight. We were shooting at 100 yards, no problem with it. Uh, I'll roll in some footage of when I was shooting at 240 yards at a piece of steel. And I think I was able to hit it like seven out of 10 times. So definitely not terrible results uh, in that situation. It would be nice if I did wanna swap out that front sight to be able to do that. Uh, now, we were out here last week, myself and Christian, and it was his first time ever shooting them. I gave him no training time or no prep time. I just wanted to put this in his hands to see how organically he was able to get accustomed to them. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with them? Well, like Ryan said, not having been able, uh, shooting these a lot, uh, it was an interesting little experience for me. The one thing I like about these is you can pick up the sights really very quickly. Transitioning from the scope to the sight, it was real quick. You didn't have to search for it too awful much. It rolled right in line to where I wanted to see it. Uh, as he said as well, we were getting pretty good accuracy out to 100 yards. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the offset from when you're going from scope to, to offset sights. We still see we're able to get pretty damn accurate on these things. I enjoy them. If I, uh, if I was going to get offset sights, I'd probably get these. I like how they look. I like how flush they sit. They pick up really quickly. Uh, the sight picture is good. Even out to distance, and I've got a little eyesight trouble, and I was still able to pick them up pretty well close up. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them overall. Yeah, and th as far as the sight picture goes, the rear sight only has one setting, so you don't have like a small opening and a large opening. However, I think they picked a perfect size of where you get that balance of speed and precision. I mean, like we said, we were knocking steel no problem at 100 yards, and I was able to do seven out of 10 with irons at 240, which is about as well as I would do with any type of iron sights, because my eyes obviously aren't the best either. Uh, so I have no complaints as far as that goes. And um, the other thing is, so like I kind of got myself off track, but when I said I want my sights to be out of the way when I'm not using them, the other thing is when I do need them, I want them to be exactly where I expect them to be. And with these, as soon as you rotate that gun over to go to your backup iron sights, your sights are right there. There's no having to kind of search around or get lined up. It's exactly in your line of sight as soon as you go from your scope to your irons, which is ideal. That's exactly what I want. Um, now, as far as kind of the competition out there, there are some other offset sites that you can get, some very popular ones. Um, however, to my knowledge, there's none that let you go from offset to in line. So let's say you just bought your AR-15. You don't know if you want a red dot. You don't know if you want a scope. You, you're not really sure what, how you're gonna set it up, but you know you want some iron sights. In this case, you can just buy these, and then no matter what you end up with, you can have them inline if you want, or you can have them offset if you want. So you don't have to go buy a whole new set of backup sights just because you bought a magnified optic. Uh, so that's really awesome. And for the price, 
they're priced, I, I would say, cheaper than most of the popular offset sights out there from companies like Magpul or Troy, which I'm never gonna buy products from Troy, so that's totally out of the question for me anyway. Uh, if you wanna know why, I'll put a link to a story down below. Anyway, um, I, I, try, I try not to get on my soapbox about that too much. But anyway, so I really think that for, for the value, you're getting some excellent sights here. I have no question of their durability. Um, I, you know, I haven't necessarily done a torture test with them, but they're nice, sturdy metal. And uh, because of the, the detents, they are gonna have a little bit more give. If you drop them, they might knock out of place, but it's not gonna break them because it has that little extra give, which is, I think, really nice. Um, so all in all, I think if you're looking for a set of irons for your gun, again, especially if you don't know how you're gonna outfit it with optics later, I think these are a great option. I'll put a link to where you can find them below. And even better, they actually just recently reduced the price on these. So they made it even more affordable than they were already. So uh, like I said, I'll have a link to that below. Uh, I highly recommend everything from Strike Industries. Again, these aren't without their faults, but I think that the, for the value you're getting them at and the pros that come along with them, I, I really think you're getting an awesome set of backup irons here. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, sir. Okay, so again, I'm a big fan. You'll see plenty of footage of us shooting back and forth with them. Uh, good stuff, but as always, I hope you were able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching. Okay, so just to let you know what steel we're shooting down there, because you probably heard we were shooting steel. Uh, this is a silhouette target from Thor Targets. These things are really well priced, hence why I'm gonna be using them on the channel. Uh, they're also made here in Oregon by a couple of friends of mine. Uh, really good people, so obviously I'm happy to use their products. I'm gonna see a lot more steel targets from Thor Targets on my channel from here on out. Uh, you'll be <laughs> seeing me shoot all different calibers at it. So we'll be able to get a good idea of its durability through a few thousand rounds. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated on the steel, but I just wanted to let you know uh, what I'm shooting out there. I'll have a link to their website below so you can check out their products. They have some good deals, and especially with free shipping on anything over, I think it's like 80 bucks, with, which with steel is a really nice thing. So check them out if you want, but I'll have a link below and you'll see a lot more from them in, on my channel in the future. Han Solo has one of those broom handles. Yeah, the Mauser uh, yeah. C89 broom handle. C86 yeah, I'm broom so handle. bad at remembering all those numbers. But yeah, it's weird same. being Jewish. All I got to do is think about it in, in terms of money, and I can remember it. <laughs> like a penny.